Third set is going to be on Metalopolis as uh, this is the third and deciding set. Terrius at 12 o'clock, the Red Zerg. And his opponent uh, all the way on the opposite side of the map is the Blue Terran, Holt Prime. Fans from both players here in support. And uh, Metalopolis, the map, we had uh, Scrap Station, which uh, favored Zerg, Lost Temple, favored Holt Prime. And uh, now we go to Metalopolis. Uh, who do you like uh, for this map? Well, Met Met Metalopolis is pretty, actually, pretty good map for Zerg sometimes. And if you look at his spawn posi position this time, it's, it's excellent for Zerg. Cross map means that they are absolutely farthest away from each other so the Zerg can easily, safely, fast expand. And this is what he's doing now. He's sending a quick drone scout just to see if the Terran is at the closest spawn position. And then if the Terran is not at the closest spawn position, he will fast expand. If the Terran was at his close, closest spawn posi position, he would do a spawning thing. But right now I think he's going to fast expand. And he's going to be very happy to find the Terran at the bottom spot. Bottom spawn location right now. So right now I give it a slight, slightly third favor. Okay, our Zerg player is Terius, just 17 years of age and living the dream as a pro gamer here in Korea. Fast uh, expansion first here for Zerg. And what this allows him to do actually is that he actually waits with his spawning pool to the 16 foot count and it's very late. But it, it, that makes his economy even that much stronger. So right now he's way ahead economically in this game. SCV is there to spot what is going on in his base. And another uh, extractor here for uh, Zerg at uh, Pult Prime's base. Trying to uh, slow down Hold Prime as much as he can in terms of Vespian gas. I guess the other thing that uh, a gas deal does for Zerg is uh, if you know that uh, the Marines are shooting down your extractor, you know that those Marines are not coming to attack you when you're doing a fast expand. So it's going to slow down the the uh, aggression of uh, Terran. Yeah, I mean. Obviously, when you have a unit shooting in, <laughs> at one of your opponent's buildings or on your building in his base, you know that he won't come to your base anytime soon, right? So, but I mean, that is a good thing if you play if you know that the other guy is going to try to rush you, right? But this time it's just I don't think you're annoying. He didn't even cancel expected this time, so I don't know. I think this time it was it didn't make any sense when I should do it. I would rather save that drone and go for a. Um, the most powerful economic opening I could even like, think of and do that extra at the uh, just this game but yeah Holt Prime is uh, working on his second command center so looking to uh, expand as well factory out as he's uh, training a Hellion wants to go mechanical early on Tech Lab added on as well, and a queen out to the expansion for uh, Terius. Uh, he's going basically the same opening that he did uh, in the second game, except that he's not going that f fast starboard with the throw drop. He still expands after factory, and he's trying to catch up with the Zerg when it comes to the economic battle. Uh, just hoping that that the Zerg, uh, no, that he, that he will get big enough push. Uh, he's going for a strong timing push, I think, around when the, the expansion kicks in and gets up enough units. Roaches out for Terius. So he wants to defend against the uh, Hellion uh, rush. Let's take a look at uh, Hellion as it heads up to the base. Just uh, one lone Hellion, avoiding the creep, best it can. Three Roaches, chasing it away. Uh, 
I think the main problem for Terran here is that with this bomb location actually and the way that Zerg is playing, uh, he's always going lair before speed. So his muta timing will be a bit faster than a normal normal muta timing. And so with the timing attack that the Terran is planning now with this expansion, I think it will be a little bit too late. Uh, and he will have enough muta to stop it. And so I think this this game is looking really good for Zerg right now. Some extra Zerglings brought out for Terius. A lot of gas for Terius. Adding another extractor. So uh, Terius now with uh, four gas. You could say that Terius has a lot of gas. <laughs> And Zerglings uh, here to uh, do some harassment. Bunker uh, in place as well. As the Marauders uh, chase the Zerglings away. Engineering bay being added to the uh, box in. I don't think so, says Polt Prime there. Zerglings trying to get around to the backside. Baneling nest uh, almost complete for Terius. Siege tank on the way down for Polt Prime. And uh, here's some more harassment. The Zerglings. The Marauders say, get out. The poking with the Zerglings is basically the Zerg's way of trying to figure out when the, t when the turn is going to push. Sizing the army every time he pokes, he sees how many Marauders, how many Marines, <laughs> if there's a tank there, whatever. Uh, trying to gather how much time he has to, to build up his economy before he has to start building units. Another siege tank down the rampway. Banelings on the way. Four of them actually retreating, I should say. And Mutalisks, three of them uh, heading over to do some harassment. Mutalisks are uh, in the main right now. Let's take a look. There they are. Forcing Colt Prime to the backside of his base. Banelings are gonna burrow. And the tanks keep on coming. Wants to add a couple more bunkers here. Nope. Takes his own bunker out. When Polt Prime, uh, I mean, Polt Prime just destroyed his own uh, bunker, do you think uh, that was something that uh, he has planned in a game like this, or no, no, something no. that he realized, okay, wait, I want to move my bunkers outwards, and in order to do so, I have to take this one out? Is that something that he knows before the game that he's eventually going to do in this game, or something that he just did because he had to? I mean, some, you know, if you, I don't know, did he salvage the bunker, or did he destroy the bunker? He destroyed his own bunker. Okay, then... He destroyed his own bunker here, and then... Uh, he, just, he just decided, oh, maybe a misclick, we just decided I want to move it a bit further. It's, you don't plan to destroy buildings. You can just plan to salvage a bunker, but just to flat out destroy it, is, that's either a misclick, or is that... Just change his mind. Another hatchery on the way. For Terius. A lot of uh, siege tanks there. Hitting a bit of a lull as both uh, players macroing up. We've got uh, three bases along the top part uh, for Terius, uh, just two for Polt Prime. Of course, from a Zerg perspective, you always want to be at least one ahead. Oh, oh. And Mutalisk uh, harassment, trying to get to that uh, medevac. <laughs> He's wow. still standing up on two banes. Wow. Uh, and here, 
Oh boy. Oh, and no. <laughs> yeah, there are the Banelings there. There's two more right there, surrounded by them. Does not want to uh, tip his hand just yet. <laughs> Oh boy. Uh, he's gonna let it go. Oh, it's a huge failing hit. <laughs> a trap there by Terius. Here comes another. Two more veiling traps. Not gonna let those ones uh, out just yet. Another expansion down at uh, 8 o'clock. Terius really building up a, a big army here. And it looks like he's going to try to go and defend. A lot of Banelings here chasing after the Marines. Oh, is he going to get the Marines backing up? All the Marines pretty much gone. And now just Mutalist chasing them down. A couple of Marines, a couple of Marauders, all that's left from that army. Another set going towards the main here. Bainley's there to defend as well though. Walking into a bit of a trap here. And this map is being dominated by creep everywhere. Clearly, Terrius is owning this map. He's got uh, bases. Four of them, all up and running now, and creep all over the place, leading up towards his map to be able to spot anything coming near his direction. And he's getting heavy upgrades on his ground units, and he's getting a sizable mutal army, so this is looking good. I mean, four versus three bases, and the third base for the town has not been running good right up until now, right, anyway, so... Should be fine. Ooh. Terrence trying to expand to uh, five, five o'clock and more uh, harassment there. Ultralist Cavern on the way for Terrius. Usually, that's not good news for Terran. Everything this, and it, the, the only thing the Sir needs to do right now is keep poking that third base of the Terran. Not doing any attacks, just keep the keep the income of the third base in turn as low as possible, while just taking out tier three units, getting his four fifth base up and running. Oh, there's the Baneling trap, and the important thing also with that Baneling trap is it tips off uh, Terius that he knows that uh, this attack is on the way. He's going to be ready for it. And speaking of which, here's the uh, army. From the backside, by the way, as he's expanding again. I'm really missing the the infestors from game one. I mean, that would be huge right now. Have a couple of infestors in the mix, but I mean, a ton of zerglings, big splash damage there. Wow, huge splash damage for Polt Prime as he took out a, a chunk of uh, zerglings. That never even got close. Trying to attack the uh, 11 o'clock base right now is Paul Prime doing a pretty good job of it. And it looks like uh, the hatchery is going to fall. There goes the hatchery at 11. So Paul Prime achieving something here. Well, if you look at the food count, Zerg is up by 10, but that doesn't mean anything against the Terran ball that is out there. It's very scary when you have a Terran ball of so many siege tanks and marines. There's very little the Zerg can do. Right now, he needs to get some more tech units up, infestors, ultra disc, or do a counter attack on the Terran's third. This is right. This is what the Zerg does right now. Is giving the game to Terran actually, being playing too passive. Slowing down, he's lost his base over at 11. Ultralist Cavern is complete. So 
So the Ultralisk should be coming out soon. That'll aid a little bit in uh, trying to uh, break down that hack. And here comes another attack here. Bainling's trying to get in! Bainling's taking out all the tanks! And a good attack there by Terius. Now this is what he needs to do. He needs to poke at a Terran army where they are not sieged. Do not engage the Terran army that is like fully sieged and fully fortified. And now he's going for the third while he's getting killed, his fourth is getting killed. And that is perfect. This is the way you have to face it. Do not engage the Terran main army. Just go for the go for the sucker punch. Bainling drop here at the five o'clock expansion. Not necessarily terribly effective. Meanwhile, uh, Zerg Terrius has uh, lost his his eight o'clock base. Loses one siege tank to those mutalisks. Go, 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 go. And here he comes! Getting in pretty close. Bailing's now on the sub. Zergling from the backside on the tanks, and he should get all these tanks. Oh, a clean sweep of the entire army. And that might be the turning point. A huge, huge play there for Tarius. And this command center is probably not going to see much more time. Oh, and look at this pack of uh, overlords heading down with the mutalisks. Where is it going to drop? And here they go to the natural, and that should be enough to uh, win this game. Mutalists taking out the remaining turrets. Banelings there as well. Zerglings taking out this tank that is unseaged. And I don't know if there's any more chance here for Bolt Prime, a great effort. But uh, in the end, Terius uh, probably leading most of the game, if not all of it. Uh, that's what I was about to say. I mean, from the beginning, he got such a strong in front of, my, in front of the lead. He was lucky with his spawn position. He was lucky that the, the time didn't do anything early, even though so he could abuse it by going a later pool than usual. He could get a lot more draws than usual. He could get his third base faster. He could get his layer type faster. Everything, the Zerg was one step ahead of the Terran all the way. And in the end of this game, he's going to be one step as well. Zerglings, Roaches, and Mutalisks all there. Um, I don't know if I've even seen the Ultralisks yet. Uh, he's making like five right now, but that's just rubbing it in kind of. Yeah, there's so probably good. not even going to be a need to see it. Uh, this game is over. Uh, we should see a GG any moment here from uh, Bolt Prime. There's always need to see the cows, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, just all sorts of damage here. I think this is all anticlimactic by uh, this time now. There's the Ultralisks. As uh, this game is over, let's see uh, how Polk Prime is going to make his exit. And that is fully upgraded. Too. Wow. Scary, scary. And a little bit of last ditch annihilation. There's the Ultralisks uh, as they're finally spotted, and that should be enough for him to see. I'm like, wow, you got those? <laughs> I don't know uh, if there is anything that uh, he can do. It truly would be the greatest comeback of all time if he's uh, able to somehow pull this off. Let's see how imbalanced this planetary fortress is going to be. There we go. Ultralist, there's the GG. And indeed, Terius goes on to victory 2-1 to one as he takes wins on Scrap Station and here on Metalopolis, uh, Terius advances to the round of 32. Good game by Terius as we have had our Zerg player advance and uh, 
We've had a couple of uh, TVZs today. First one was won by a Terran. Uh, the second one this time around uh, was won by our Zerg player, uh, Tarius. Uh, and once again, I think uh, he probably led uh, for, for much of the games that uh, he did win. Uh, both of the games that he won, he actually won pretty much in the early stages, getting the economic, economical lead. But in the last game, the Terran had a chance with a big siege tank army, but he did a mistake and the story was playing it right. So well, in the end, he does go on to victory. Uh, Tarius advances to the round of 32. We're going to have a talk with him in a moment. <laughs>